Hello everyone. Uh, today uh, we are going to learn about immobilization of enzymes. So our today's topic is immobilization of enzymes. So uh, what brought about the need for immobilization of enzymes? What was the primary reason to immobilize enzymes? Enzymes, as we know, are found in nature in all living forms. And they are the proteins. Usually, they are proteinaceous in nature. And they are responsible for carrying out various functions of the cell or the organism. So they exist in nature either uh, in free form, uh, that is extracellularly, or they are present inside the cells. So either ways, uh, they are only beneficial for the organism that is producing it. They perform its vital functions. So in order for us to harness its potential applications in the industry, we need to obtain enzymes. For that, we performed extraction and isolation and purification of enzymes. And as we know that uh, it consists of several unit operations to extract an enzyme. So obviously the cost of the extracted en enzyme is uh, not something that we can afford regularly. So and it is always better to improve the cost efficiency of the process. So in order to use enzymes at a very cost effective manner, we tried many methods to preserve them to uh, to use them again and again to reuse them so one of that uh, so one of those methods is the immobilization of enzymes so we do immobilization of enzymes because enzymes enzymes are very costly Okay, so and after the end of the process, uh, when I said reuse, that means the enzyme is recovered. But in the uh, normal process, uh, without immobilization, the enzymes, because they are water soluble, again, this is a problem for uh, industrial purpose, because enzymes are water soluble they are lost so in order to regain enzymes and to reuse them we immobilize them so the primary objective of immobilization is to reuse enzymes to reuse enzymes okay so immobilization is done in many ways okay again we are adding another step of immobilization that of course increases the cost but it is a one-time expenditure it is it can come into the capital expenditure and it is one-time expenditure and we can use this immobilized enzyme for several number of times so thus overall the cost of the whole process is reduced so immobilization is a method of also improvement it is also done to improve enzyme performance. Okay. So basically, immobilization means fixing the enzymes on something or somehow making it recoverable okay easily recoverable so immobilization is done in two ways immobilization of enzymes is done in two ways
वन इन्वॉल्व फॉर्मेशन ऑफ केमिकल बॉन्ड्स एंड अदर वन मे नॉट इन्वॉल्व फॉर्मेशन ऑफ केमिकल बॉन्ड्स एंड इट इज सिंपली कंटेनमेंट मेथड्स मेथड्स इन विच वी कैन कंटेन द इंजाइम्स इन टू समथिंग the chemical methods again can use a support or a carrier or it may not use a support we can say carrier free and within containment methods we have two types of containment one is containment within a meshwork of gel gel fibers or we can say gel entrapment method and the other method includes containment method is membrane based methods in which we obviously use some sort of membrane to immobilize the enzyme okay. in the chemical carrier bound method the binding the chemical nature of the binding on the basis of the chemical nature of the binding it can be of two types one binding by weak forces that we normally call as adsorption binding on to the surface binding of enzyme on to the surface of the carrier by weak forces okay and the other can be a stronger method we know that covalent bonds are very strong bonds so the other method can be covalent binding method the carrier free method basically uh, depends upon the nature of the enzyme either it forms aggregates or crystals so it can be cross linked enzyme aggregates or cross linked enzyme crystals okay this is cross linked enzyme aggregates or cross linked enzyme crystals and in the membrane based methods we can either encapsulate it we can contain the enzyme within the membrane by encapsulating it so it can be merely encapsulation or it can be based upon immobilized membrane containing enzymes and set up onto the system of ultra filtration so we can have continuous filtration as well as reaction simultaneously okay so the chemical based methods uh, in which carrier are involved a carrier is a support uh, which carries the enzyme on which we will stick the enzyme so this support is again the properties of this support should be uh, such that it can hold the enzyme for a longer period of time okay so there are various properties a carrier should have a carrier should have it should have high surface to volume ratio okay it should have higher protein binding capacity it should be compatible and insoluble in the reaction medium it should have high mechanical and chemical stability 
during the reaction. It should be easily recoverable after use and it should be readily available at the place where we want to use our immobilized enzyme and it should be obviously cost effective carrier. So these are various properties that it should have. Now the stronger bonding is the covalent bonding and we know that uh, adsorption is a weak phenomena, it is a reversible process. Uh, but still the binding by adsorption by weak interactions should be so much so that the enzyme could stick there for quite some time so that it could although it is cheaper but overall the cost of the process the extraction cost of the process of the enzyme and the use application of the enzyme should you know we must get some pr uh, profit out of it so it should hold on to the carrier for some time okay and uh, regarding covalent binding there are <coughs> various types of functional groups involved for covalent bonding such as uh, hydroxyl groups, thiol groups, amino groups and carboxylic groups. Immobilization by covalent binding induces a greater effect on the enzyme. Okay. All the types of immobilization affect the kinetics of the enzyme, affect the kinetics of the enzyme somehow or the other, either by partition effects or by uh, mass transfer limitations, they affect the kinetics of the immobilized enzyme. We will deal with it later. So now a covalent bonding can be single bonding, single bonded binding or it could involve multi-point covalent attachments. Okay, it could be single point attachment or it could be multi-point attachments. Single point attachment is obviously single covalent bond formation between the enzyme and the carrier, which is very weak, which will be very weak and ultimately there is chances of losing the enzyme. Okay, during the process. So it's better to have multi-point uh, covalent attachment, although it provides great stability, but also it affects the properties, the kinetic properties of the enzymes a lot. So, uh, Many enzymes have been uh, immobilized using covalent binding because uh, it gives uh, a lot of stability to the immobilized enzyme uh, and we can use it for a long period of time. So some examples of enzymes immobilized by this method are uh, chymotrypsin, alpha chymotrypsin, trypsin, carboxypeptidase A, lipase, D-amino acid oxidase, ferrodoxin, NADP, NADP oxidoreductase, esterase, renin and Penicillin G acylase. The drawbacks of covalent binding is that the carrier is hardly recoverable. You cannot recover the carrier once you have bound the enzyme to it. Secondly, because we modify, because the carrier is modified in covalent binding. We have to treat the carrier, whatever carrier we are choosing, we have to treat it with different obnoxious chemicals and change it into some form in which we can bind our enzyme to it. Secondly, the immobilization yield is low in this process. And the kinetic properties of enzymes are affected the most in this case. If the binding is on a non-porous support, then the mass transfer limitations have a slight role to play depending upon the properties of the carrier. Whether the carrier is something that attracts the substrate and repels the product, it is better if it does so. And if it does not do so and it repels the substrate, then our, we uh, will surely have a great issue uh, during the reaction or during our process in which we will be using our immobilized enzymes. So, the positive side is that the operational stability of carrier bound immobilized enzymes by covalent binding is high. Its operational stability is high. It is stable throughout the operation. And the half life of enzyme activity is higher. That is, 
if the enzyme is degrading with respect to time if it is decaying then the half life of enzyme activity is higher that means it is active for a long period of time so in this covalent binding in the case uh, for covalent binding we prefer using spacer arms spacer arms are certain functional group by functional groups which provide you know a more distance for the enzyme to bind and uh, which provides more effective area for the enzyme to bind if suppose you have uh, a small carrier and the binding site over the carrier over very near so if we incorporate a spacer arm so the effective binding area of the support of the carrier has increased our enzyme can bind to more enzymes can bind the surface area for binding of enzymes have been increased across the surface if we incorporate spacer arms so the role of spacer arms is to increase the binding surface area the binding capability of the support of our carrier carrier so generally used spacer arms are glyoxyl groups glyoxyl groups and epoxy groups and glutaraldehyde these are commonly used groups they are many and whatever groups we can find that are bifunctional they can be used and they should have a considerable length okay they should have a considerable length not too much not too small okay too much length will uh, not favor multi point attachment multi point covalent bonding okay and shorter lengths will uh, will not be so effective in increasing the surface area binding surface area okay now coming to the adsorption phenomena binding by adsorption now this is much more simpler phenomena it it includes weak interactions and we know what are the weak, weak interactions they are uh, van der waals forces uh, which are short range and uh, stronger weak interactions are hydrophobic interaction and ionic bonds they are quite stronger and uh, ionic bonds are temporary and they change with the ionic strength and the ph of the medium okay and hydrophobic interaction will only exist if there are hydrophobic residues involved now in this case uh, in this case in the case of adsorption the carrier can be easily recovered because adsorption is a reversible phenomena and we can recover the carrier back immobilization yields are high we can get a lot of enzyme uh, immobilized on a carrier which supports adsorption and thirdly no obnoxious chemicals are involved in preparing the carrier almost uh, many carriers which are involved in adsorption are already prepared or require minor preparations and the drawbacks major drawbacks is the uh, of using adsorption is that enzyme is easily lost by desorption in this case with subtle changes in reaction medium even slight changes in the reaction medium can cause loss of enzymes but in non aqueous medium if you are using adsorption in non aqueous medium and uh, choosing a suitable adsorption base carrier support we can get higher stability for the enzymes 
immobilized onto the surface of such uh, carriers on which the enzymes are adsorbed. So adsorption will be preferable in non-aqueous medium. Adsorption on ion exchange resins is weak due to low binding sites. Hence, ionic polymers such as polyethylenemine and dextran sulfate coating are used. Sometimes the carriers are covered, are coated with certain, certain ionic polymers to, imp to improve the binding. Ionic polymers like polyethylene, polyethylene imine, polyethylene imine, polyethylene imine, PEI, or dextran sulfate. They provide higher concentration of ionic groups and they have since they have a very flexible structure so they provide better and stronger binding not so strong as covalent bonds and uh, although almost as strong but uh, the binding is re reversible since it is ionic binding so it is reversible uh, on changing the conditions of the medium okay so now we have dealt with the carrier based methods of immobilization. Now let us see the carrier free based methods. Although carrier based methods uh, the recovery of enzymes is easier because they are larger particles and they can be separated easily. And in carrier free based methods the particle size is quite small because in it we don't use any support the enzyme itself using different cross-linking agents are cross-linked and uh, either it forms cross-linked enzyme crystals or it can form cross-linked enzyme aggregates again we can use multi uh, multivalent groups in both these cases this is cross-linked enzyme aggregates and CLEC is cross-linked enzyme crystals. So basically the enzyme moieties, the protein molecules are joined by multivalent or bivalent groups. So all those, all those uh, groups that we were using for spacer arms, spacer arms, we can use it here, okay, to achieve this binding. So uh, using these groups will provide better binding, and many proteins and uh, enzymes have the property of crystallizing or forming aggregates naturally, but that is a very slow phenomena. So using bivalent groups would uh, expedite the process of uh, cross-linking and we can get large crust uh, clusters of enzymes. Uh, but one more drawback occurring in this case is that if the degree of clustering of cross-linking is high, so we might lose certain active sites of certain enzymes, certain enzyme molecules which could get embedded within the crystal or the aggregate. So care must be taken that uh, during formation of cross-linked enzyme aggregates or crystals, maximum active site should be exposed readily outwards to have max to take many maximum benefit of the immobilization process. <clears throat> Although many uh, across all the immobilization methods, some activity is 
sometimes lost so uh, during the optimization process we check for the most suitable conditions in which immobilization can be carried out to get the maximum benefit to get maximum enzyme activity of the immobilized enzymes okay next after this carrier free method we have the containment methods in the containment method the first one that is the gel entrapment method in the gel entrapment method as the name suggests we have a gel and what is a gel it is a polymer it is a polymer most popular uh, polymers used are alginate polyacrylamide polyurethane polyvinyl alcohol kappa carrageenan etc such polymers are used which have uh, gelling property and the enzymes are mixed during the gelation process of these polymers so that the enzymes get entrapped within the fibers of the polymer matrix so our enzyme gets entrapped into it so it's a, it will be a 3d structure and our enzyme molecules will get entrapped into the polymer fibers polymer chains or polymer fibers okay <clears throat> so i'll repeat once again the popular matrices used for gel entrapment are alginate i'll write them down some popular matrices are alginate polyacrylamide polyacrylamide polyurethane polyurethane polyvinyl alcohol polyvinyl alcohol and kappa carrageenan kappa carrageenan kappa carrageenan now in these polymers in these uh, gels there is a common drawback the common drawback is the tendency to leakage since the enzymes are not chemically bonded or it might be very slightly bonded in some cases if we modify certain polymer chains we can have uh, entrapment along with bonding of the enzyme onto the polymer fibers but with increase in temperature the polymer chains can disalign and form a liquid solution and our enzymes of course would also get denatured in that case if we increase the temperature but in the normal functioning temperature also there is a problem of leakage of enzymes in this method so the the basic drawback of gel entrapment is the loss of enzymes throughout the process the leakage problem and this leakage problem can be diminished by increasing the concentration of the gel so that dense polymer chains are formed a dense uh, network of uh, chains uh, or fibers are formed but that would increase the mass transfer limitations and even if you do not increase the concentration of the gel the gel entrapment poses a major mass transfer limitation problem for the process or for the enzymatic process so it is 
it can be used depends depending upon the process uh, or the enzyme which we are subjecting to immobilization we can use and but it should be avoided it should be avoided as much as we can okay so but it is a method of immobilization so we can use and uh, now another method for immobilization are based upon membrane they are membrane based methods now the membrane based methods first we'll de deal with encapsulation encapsulation means there will be a membrane and we will have enzyme within this enzyme molecules entrapped within this membrane this membrane should should be permeable to the substrate and to the product so generally what we use is a semi permeable membrane a semi permeable membrane the generally used micro capsules are reverse micelles reverse micelles and liposomes and liposomes the reverse micelles have their hydrophilic head towards the inner enzymatic side they have their hydrophilic ends towards the inner enzymatic side these are reverse micelles okay we have our enzymes inside and the outer layer of the micelles which are generally phospholipids comes out to be like this and liposomes are bilayered structures they are double layered surfactants so that the external solvent is the aqueous enzyme phase okay so we will have uh, the hydrophilic end towards both the in the case of liposomes we will have hydrophilic in towards inside as well as towards outside since they are bilayered structures so we will have i hope you can easily see it okay enzymes are entrapped inside the main drawback of enzyme reverse micelles is mechanical weakness and tendency of the enzyme to denature at the water organic phase interface amongst all enzymes lipases are particularly suited particularly designed to work at interfaces so their immobilization in reverse micelles has been thoroughly studied okay and liposomes are more used in other pharmaceutical applications like drug delivery rather than in immobilization in immobilization reverse micelles are more used than liposomes now the other method of 
immobilization is the ultra filtration based method <clears throat> now the ultra in the ultra filtration based methods if we have a simple ultra filtration membrane either we can have immobilized enzymes over the membrane on either side on either side any one side or both the sides or we can have free enzymes on either of the side or any one side either of any one side or on both the sides okay so in both the modes the major drawback in this case is is the clogging which of course is the drawback of the filtration process and we have to avoid uh, larger size particles to come in in this process another drawback is that another drawback is inactivation by interaction with interfaces like air bubbles or any other interface that comes in between and by undesirable aggregation because there is a tremendous pressure during ultra filtration so if uh, the enzymes aggregate together which is undesirable it again becomes a drawback for this process because it will clog the membrane the filtration membrane and uh, ultimately lead to failure of the process so these were some of the different methods of immobilization of enzymes and we will discuss about the evaluation of immobilization process in our next lecture